Folks, we got some work around our pond to do, hoping to get this done before winter. Lots of piles of dirt here that we dredged out of the pond last fall, still haven't got it moved. And today we have Bobby, the Bobcat small articulated loader with us. We want to try to answer the question, is this a replacement for a compact tractor? Let's get started. The pedals are backwards compared to how they are on the tractors. So the right pedal is forward, the left pedal is reversed. So probably throughout this episode, you're going to see me jump in the wrong direction. It has nothing to do with the machine, it's just my not being ready for it. There I went again. Now it's a 24 horsepower machine, 60 inch bucket. You just see a much larger capacities for the same horsepower. We'll talk about that more in a minute. So in some ways it's just like a track loader or a skid steer. You have a closer view of your bucket. Uh, it feels like a, a more industrial machine than a tractor. But in other ways, it's like a tractor. At 24 horsepower and one hydrostatic range, there's not a quite enough oomph to push into this real muddy and hard packed clay. This machine rides a lot better than what a track loader or a skid steer loader would, at least in my opinion. Any sort of an articulated machine provides a nice ride. absolutely huge bucketfuls. It's rated to carry, it's got a sticker right here, it's rated to carry 1,534 pounds at full height when you're going straight and 1,222 pounds when you're fully articulated like this. Now it's got one more hidden feature and that is the ability to extend your bucket. Now that's not so necessary for what I'm doing today, but if you were trying to reach over a truck or maybe reach over a, a ditch to, to get a, a longer range to grab a rock or something, that would be really useful. Now that does reduce your max lift capacity. I think it shows 888 pounds fully out there, fully extended. Remember, this is a 60 inch bucket. Probably too large of a bucket really for this uh, machine, but wow. We received two and a half inches of rain about 36 hours ago. Two and a half inches. And I'm still running out here over the grass or well, whatever you call our yard. Some of it's not really grass very good as it's clover and stuff, but not tearing it up.
had some large equipment operators mention in one of our other videos when we were working in this hard clay about how, well, you just need to run your bucket in and then curl it. That'll break it up. Yeah, that's true when you're using real heavy equipment, but these lighter machines, just they just don't have enough curl strength to be able to, to pop that loose like that. I was doing the best I can. I like operating this machine. It's, I, it's got a small steering wheel on it, included a spinner knob. I believe that's from the factory. It makes it handy as can be to spin it right around. I like this. I do wish it had a low range on the transmission. In the specifications, they say that a two range transmission is a on the future. Uh, I don't know how soon in the future. That was just in the specifications. By the time you watch this, that two range transmission might already be out. If so, make sure you get it. Okay, this is, a, this is a pretty full bucket. Just want to show you how strong the hydraulics are. I, you know, I don't know how much the bucket weighs, but you know, that's probably close to that 1,500 pounds. It's, it's at least 1,000 pounds, um, and there's certainly no problem, and I didn't feel any hydraulic weakness at all. Um, one fascinating aspect to this is that there's a, a second version of this machine available with a, a, I think they call it a counterweight, an additional 474 pounds of counterweight apparently on the back end. And with that addition, it's rated to lift 1,952 pounds rated operating capacity. They call it ROC. I really don't think we're talking about a hydraulic issue. So, the hydraulics on this machine are far and away superior to those on a compact tractor of the same horsepower. It's got a flow rate of this auxiliary valve up here. Let's say we want to run a stump grinder or another attachment. It's got a flow rate of 12 gallons per minute. That's double a subcompact tractor. There are several competitors that have the small articulated load. I've sort of been excited by the concept, but I hadn't really been excited by several other aspects. Once Bobcat came out with this unit, that's when my excitement was peaked. And, and the reason is because Bobcat has the dealers here in the USA to be able to support these units. I just don't see that you can have any sort of a, uh, a tractor or a any sort of construction equipment without good solid dealer support and that doesn't just mean one dealer near you it means the whole dealer network that can get you parts because obviously they won't have every part for this machine right there in stock in your local dealer you have to figure out how can you get parts fast I just think Bobcat's well positioned to, to actually make this market something that's real and that we can consider here in the USA. In Europe, these things have been big uh, for years. there are four tire choices. Not totally sure about that. This is the most aggressive. These are the ag tires. I 
I suspect with these being the most aggressive, that shows why I'm able to uh, pull it down and kill the engine so easily, because they're getting great traction. They don't spin first. If you had turf tires, you might spin the wheels before you run out of power. I'm not sure. Working in such hard clay like this might not be the uh, definition of what this thing's really made for. It's probably more made for spreading mulch, you know, where you could reach that extending boom right out over your sidewalk or over bushes. I imagine they would think that a track loader would probably be better suited for this particular operation. But as you know, most of us can't afford a you know, exactly the right unit for every situation. We have to find something that's somewhat multi-purpose. This thing weighs 4,200 pounds. Whoops. see the cutting edge, but I do feel like I have a better feel for where it is. Yeah, I messed up that time, but that's lack of experience. I'm going up a little hump back here. So from a loader capacity and, and strength standpoint, we're somewhere around a, a 3R series of the John Deere, between a 3R, maybe slightly less than a 4R, and yet we're under 25 horsepower. This thing is, is unique. It's just different than a tractor. So how about other attachments? What can we do for other attachments? We'll talk about that next. We don't have any three-point hitch. We don't have any rear PTO. In fact, we don't have any PTO power takeoff at all. So how can we run any other attachments? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's right up here on the front. This thing, compared to a, a small compact tractor, this thing's got enormous hydraulics. Right there. So we can use hydraulic motors uh, to, to run all sorts of attachments. I don't think Bobcat has one yet, but some manufacturers actually run finish mowers on the front of these. These are big loads of dirt. Do your one-year plans ever turn into five-year plans? I think that's what's going on with my pond plans here. We moved in and we had all sorts of big plans for this pond. Well, we weren't sure. We thought we'd either fill it in or dig it out and make it better. Well, we then decided to dig it out and make it better, but we haven't got around to it yet. So just to refresh you, if you're newer to our channel or if you happen to miss some of the discussions on our what we intend to do with our pond. The current intention is to wait till late summer some season and uh, pump it dry. We want to pump the pond dry and then get in there with uh, some sort of equipment. Rather than using a, a, a track hoe, you know, a, a big high hoe, we'd like to get in there with some compact equipment like this or like a bunch of Johnny's maybe and dig out that pond and use some of that soil elsewhere on our property. But the main thing is make the pond deep enough so that we can keep fish in it. Right now the pond uh, in a lot of areas is only a foot or so deep when the, when the level gets down this low. And the level gets this low any time in the summer. I, I think there's kind of a water table there. So that's, you know, we've got to dig it out deeper if we want to try to stock it with any fish. In years past what's happened is that the water that comes off the road ditch, we accept it. It comes onto our property. And it's it's drained right off the road ditch and around this big hump and into this pond right here. And then the pond gets totally full and finally begins to drain out onto the other property over here to my left. 
What I'm trying to do is I'm going to take this extra dirt and I'm actually going to build this up here a little bit such that the water that comes off the road ditch is going to be encouraged to go directly on down behind me to this uh, tile up right here, this uh, uh, drain inlet here. And when that thing gets full and overflowing, it should just flow right on down the ditch and hopefully not fill up the pond from this direction. Now, we still have two other areas, way back there and way back there, that are still draining into the pond. So this is probably not the final solution, but maybe it'll help. And even if it doesn't bring a solution, maybe it'll help us understand this whole drainage issue a lot more. It's really hard to actually see what goes on uh, when it's raining and it just seems like water's coming from every direction. So uh, just like any engineering problem, well, maybe it's easier for a true engineer, but for me, I just kind of have to experiment with it and see, oh, I see how that changed it. That made it better, or that didn't make it better. That's really what's on my mind today. I'm going to bring this dirt down here. I'm going to fill it up at least to that level. And I went on down there a ways. I, I, I may uh, just try to fill this up all to about that level and kind of smooth it out. And that may be the end of it for today. Remember, two and a half inches, 36 hours ago. But we still really haven't torn up the grass here. Maybe a little bit of damage, but nothing major. Do you use your tractor for something unique? Something different, something that we just haven't shown before on this channel, or something that you think other folks would be interested in? If so, go to our website, tractortimewithtim.com slash visit me and fill out the form there. We may be selecting a few people over the next few months or, or sometime in the future to actually come visit. We'd like to see some unique uses. So, if you do something unique with your tractor, it doesn't matter what brand it is, let us know. We might come visit. Well, I'm about out of daylight, so I guess I'm going to have to quit. I, I got the big hump down. Um, part of it I had kind of ridden down and smoothed out a little bit before. But I got the big hump that I couldn't mow over. I got that part done. And I built this up in the deepest part, maybe even more than two feet, tapered it off that way. I, I think there's room for more dirt in there. But hopefully, this will keep that water going around the ditch and not into the pond. I will have to see how it behaves because this was also used sort of as the spillway of the pond. It's real flat here, so I, I don't know that it'll matter. Uh, but we'll soon find out. I had a really good experience with the Bobcat Small Articulated Loader. I, I enjoyed driving it. Um, it, was, it was comfortable. It was quiet. Um, I've got the doors off today because it's real warm, but it was relatively quiet. So, it, you know, it didn't have as, uh, as loud as some of the other machines we've operated. It, it's easy to see the front of the bucket when the bucket's tilted down. You can see all the way across the front of the bucket. Well, most of it. I guess there's one pedestal in the middle. It's, it's a unique machine. I'm not going to try to answer the question definitively here as will it replace a compact tractor. I know that for moving dirt like this, it did definitely better than a subcompact tractor. It's got more, more uh, dirt moving ability than a subcompact tractor. You know, you get up to the bigger sizes, you might be able to, to be competitive. But um, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the machine. And well, this is the first episode of it. We'll try several different things before we send it back. Like I said, uh, in the flagpole episode, we got it for about three months. So if you got any questions about the machine, anything you want us to try with it, we'd, we'd love to do that. Uh, meanwhile, it's just about to get dark and I'm getting hungry. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.